yeah but kind of going back to the whole like the jigsaw and the and the show this is what i wanted to say right um, and as you were explaining to me and this is what was coming in my head so you start building the pieces and if you haven't built your pieces completely the center piece is like the center space is quite large you could fill it with a partner and where you see gaps you could fill it with more pieces along with them as they build out their puzzle right and maybe it works better but if you've built your pieces to such an extent where there's this one tiny piece and you have to find that perfect piece to fit it right in there that's when you will struggle to find the perfect piece or yeah. you will feel like there is no room for anything else only this right. perfect person has to fit this piece right right, right and also right. i think he talks about it like like it's one piece the one perfect yeah. piece what if it's yeah. like play doh where you just smear it and then work around it and there is work to be done right and that's that's something he talks about as well because relationships are work and i think as much as how the show tries to normalize being single and normalize uh breaking up or normalizing divorce i think there is a lot of work to be done in terms of normalizing relationships normalizing marriage it is not always perfect and there are going to be tons of ups and downs and your ups and downs could be very different from someone else's ups and downs and he talks about this right which i thought was interesting he says like you realize the other person is not just a piece but they've got their own jigsaw going and then suddenly you realize that both of you are working towards different images and that's crazy you know but the point is why shouldn't you be working on two different images as long as you're connected in one part you're able to like you know find some connection at some part of the puzzle you could be i don't know making a whale and the other person could be making uh, an elephant and so what why should everybody be making a flower together and i think that that is something we should start normalizing saying not everybody makes a flower together it could be an elephant and a whale joined together relationships can be a monkey and a cheetah joined together like something right i think him saying that oh both of you are working towards different images is a problem is absurd two complex individuals coming together and why should you be doing the same thing right right um to me that made to me i i sort of grasped it in a slightly different way i felt like when he said you're working towards a different image uh i felt that he was talking about image in terms of the relationship not in terms of the life that you're building just in terms of the relationship for example you are somebody who is all about the family all about you know the other person all about giving and caring and just being together all the time and dealing with all of life's difficulties together and if the other person is more independent in terms of the way they deal with their shit in terms of putting down their problems in a in a in a little box and throwing that box away in terms of not talking about their problems in terms of just bottling up feelings in, on the inside if that's how they want to be a part of the relationship then those are two different images those are two different I, i know i'm sort of making this sound like a personality trait right now but i'm talking about um people having two different images and ideas of a relationship in their head i think you make a brilliant point right if you think about it we don't choose our partners like that today and that's the problem if something is important to you and these are your relationship values you should be looking for partners based on that now you will come and tell me hey i want some girl you know who looks like this or i want some guy who's gone to this school etc and suddenly you're going to be surprised with the way he deals with conflicts uh yeah cuz you didn't check for that if that was important for you you've got to look at that right if you are looking for somebody who will fit you perfectly and both of you are going to be like as a relationship be making a flower 
uh, that is very difficult to find because both of you are complex dynamic individuals that are constantly going to be grow- growing even in a relationship but then if something is important to you that is the bit that you sort out and say hey this person is actually planning to make a monkey with their life and the monkey is going to sort of meet my little tree in all of these places and that's great because we're connected on the bits that is important to both of us i'm fine if you know this person's a monkey and i'm a tree and the image looks like a monkey or a monkey on a tree our relationship looks like a monkey on a tree and i'm fine with that you will then discuss the things that are important to you you say i'm all about the family and i want to you know this is important to me and you check with the other person before you get into a relationship and if they agree fabulous there are going to be differences there are going to be places where you will move in different ways and you will be okay with it because the core stuff still something that is common to the both of you does that make sense but that's not how people look for partners there's a quote that i recently read i've been reading a lot of stoic philosophy recently and uh, you know a part of that was normalizing the fact that the decision that you made 10 years ago i mean banking on the decision that you made 10 years ago <clears throat> is like relying on an absolute stranger for life advice is like following it's the equivalent of following what a stranger said because who you were 10 years ago is not who you are now now does that apply to relationships as well what if 10 years ago you made this you built this whole you know palace of cards together based on what you wanted back then and 10 years later all of that has changed how would you deal with it then yeah so i wouldn't blanket apply this to everybody right like some people change beyond recognition and it might be impossible for them to reconcile with what choices they had made 10 years ago and it might be just they've given it enough time they've tried enough and you know they call it quits you know it's their thing right but like if i were to j- say generally speaking uh nowadays people are starting to make these decisions of who they want to spend the rest of their life with when they've become reasonable adults and when i say reasonable adults you're working you're on your own feet you're making your own like everyday decisions etc which means i'm hoping you're an adult when you make this decision so when people make this decision i encourage them to make it based on who they are at the core because at the core you are still going to be the same person more or less 20 30 years from now people change in several different ways but there how to say like th- there'll be two three things about people that you will see doesn't yeah, change yes, over time yeah, yeah. right yeah. there could be something about you that you know you, like friends from school from 20 years ago might still watch for and say you know yeah, that still have the big thoughts when he has later yeah <laughs> yeah no but <laughs> you know what i'm saying yeah. 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 yeah so it it is difficult to identify who you are at the core it takes a little bit of work but if you can figure out who you are at the core and who somebody else is at the core yeah um and what matters to you because of that um then i feel like you know these decisions last a lot longer if you find yourself early in your 20s and say that my jigsaw puzzle looks bloody perfect right now i'm not going to let anyone touch it you get away from me you move away don't come anywhere close now how does such a person find the right person the right you know the right partner if you feel like your jigsaw puzzle is perfect and you need nothing else does that feeling in your early 20s last for long or does that lead to desperation and finding a partner further down the line what would you advise to people who are way too happy with their jigsaw puzzle at this present moment who are single i say carry on i mean if you're happy with what you have carry on right uh because what matters is that you're happy not right. like, like he says not everybody needs a partner and it's okay to be on your own right there's nothing wrong with that and i think that whole analogy of jigsaw makes you feel like um you need a partner to complete your puzzle mm, yeah, right yeah. 
Yeah. That's the fodder that we've been fed all our lives that yeah. life is incomplete. You look at people who are single in their later years and you feel pity for them because you think that's not how life is supposed to be. We haven't normalized singledom, right? Mm. It's okay. Yeah. If you're happy with your person, be happy with your person. But if you feel like yeah. something's missing and if you feel like that's the partner puzzle and you need to put that in there, then do something about it. I have right. zero advice for people <laughs> who are happy with their puzzle. Like, good for you. Sometimes, like the same people who say their jigsaw puzzle is perfect, uh, who are who are seemingly seemingly perfect on the outside, are still seeking for a partner, who are still going out on dates, who are still trying to meet and mingle with people, trying to find a partner, and are very touchy about some aspects of their jigsaw. Even the slightest thing will become a red flag for them. What do you have to say to such people? Yeah, so like I was saying, right, when you filled out all the pieces of your jigsaw and there's just one little thing that's missing, you need one perfect piece that fits it because that's the sort of mindset you're in. But you have this massive hole and you find a little piece, you will put it in there hoping that there will be other pieces that will come and fill the gap, right? But if there's one tiny gap, that's all you need. Right, right, right. right. I'm going to go slightly off um, Jigsaw script and talk about something that has been on my mind for quite some time. Now, I think we've spoken about this over phone call, but not on, on record. Yeah. There are some people who are not happy with the just with, with just the one partner piece. Now, they go by the name polyamorous people who are... I, it's becoming more and more normalized as we move along. But for some people, it's still... Are you, are you serious? That's what it is? That's, that's the way you find your partner? For some people, it's as, as simple as... Do you have one best friend? I don't think so. You have multiple best friends to satisfy multiple friendship needs that you have. Why can't the same philosophy be applied to relationships? Um, now, I'm still coming to terms with what this means and how people can you know, lead relationships that, this way, but I'm looking for some inputs from you as to what you think about it. Yeah, I I don't have any first-hand experience of, you know, poly uh, amorism. Uh, but I do have friends who are poly. And um, I think I myself have learned a lot secondhand in terms of how those relationships work. But I don't think I have a comprehensive understanding of it. Um, but I can I can tell you from the perspective of someone who has done a lot with my life over the last 10 years apart from having a partner. And I envision that it's similar. It's like when you've been in a relationship and that need has been satisfied, you have the mind space and the energy to pursue other things. If you still feel incomplete, if there are still pieces of your jigsaw, sort of, <laughs> sorry, going back to that analogy, you want to fill it with more things. Now, if the format is having multiple lovers to satisfy you, so be it because we are sort of normalizing that now. Um, but, I, but I don't think polyamory is for everyone because it is quite complex. You have to uh, be able to manage your emotions to such an extent where not only are you able to deal with loving multiple people at the same time, but you have to be okay with your partners loving multiple people at the same time. It is not really for the faint hearted. It's only if you've conquered jealousy, insecurity, all of that to some extent. Yeah. Can you thrive in a relationship yeah. like that? But otherwise you will just last a few months or maybe a couple of years and you're out of that. If you have conquered the concept of self-love and yeah. you love yourself 100%. Yeah. Daniel Saul said that if you love yourself 100%, the other person who comes along needs to go above and beyond to make you feel like yeah. um, they are worth your time. But despite having mastered self-love and being unapologetically you, how do you deal with insecurities? Because dealing with those is a whole new, whole different game. 
right yeah yeah But no so i think here you know, the definition of self love probably varies i'm not really sure what daniel's definition of self love is for me i don't think you can ever 100% love yourself there is going to be a part of you that is always work in progress mm-hmm. and self love there means acceptance that acceptance of you not being where you would like to be or you not being where you would like to be yet right mm-hmm. so there are parts of you where you are insecure right mm-hmm. um there are things that you like about yourself there are things that you don't like about yourself mm-hmm. but you ask yourself the question okay i don't like this about me but where would i like to be what is my vision for this and am i doing anything to to get towards that vision because if you're not doing anything then it's very difficult to love yourself because you're right. constantly saying i'm not doing enough i don't like this bit of me like you're not able to love yourself but if you're working towards it but you're still not good enough you can still love yourself right but right. if you say actually you know what i don't like this side of me but like you know it's okay that's totally fine i'm just always going to be a jealous person and i'm not going to work on that side of my but or like with body image right like a lot of people say i'm i'm fat and i'm fine i love myself the way i am and i'm not going to do anything about it. if you can 100% like yourself being fat and you don't have to justify being fat to anybody or like not even to yourself then fabulous but these are difficult places to get to and i don't think anyone loves themselves 100% but it's important to start on that journey it's important it's important to be somewhere along that path right mm-hmm. right right it's, it's important to acknowledge yourself as a stakeholder in your life because a lot of people don't do that but yeah okay let's take a rela- uh, uh, an established relationship for example yeah someone whom you've been with for a long time and you get each other completely but there are still a few niggling uh, issues that you want to deal with right um you want to deal with a few insecurities and you don't know where to begin you don't know what the root cause of the insecurity is for example if if i'm with a person mm-hmm. and that person wants to hang out with their friends mm-hmm. sometimes there may be situations where you're not you ge- you're generally okay with them going but then you're not 100% okay with them going you you feel like oh maybe i want to accompany her because i kind of feel left out you know there is a whole form situation of fomo so how do you get to the root cause of this issue how do you get to the the source of your insecurity and is there a is there a thumb rule or a formula that you can apply to get to the root cause of each one of your insecurities that you applied in your personal life i'll take the example that you've given like you know your your partner is going out and you know you feel insecure about them going out alone and you want to accompany them but you also at the same time want to conquer that need to accompany them and not feel like that um uh, it's your thing right you have to deal with it yourself maybe maybe it doesn't have anything to do with the other person so the only way is to ask yourself why you feel that way like why are you feeling threatened is it is it who this person is going out with that sort of threatens you or is it is it you feeling excluded from this you feeling like you're not important in this in your partner's life which is why you know they're not making you a part of this particular um uh, thing you have to go a bit deeper and like question yourself there's like no magic formula but you know the answer maybe you don't want to sit down and sort of acknowledge it uh because once you admit that you have this incredible need to be a part of every little part of your partner's life it might make you feel smaller uh so it's hard to say what is the root cause only every single individual in that situation would know but there is no magic formula you have to spend time with yourself ask yourself why that bothers you and if at some point you feel like you need the support of your partner you should absolutely sit down with them and say hey i feel a bit left out um you know when i don't get to come out with you in like you know when you go out with your friends um you know what can we do about this right then your partner might suggest 
something and you might have a discussion about it but that is only after you've dealt with your feelings because most often people will be like okay i'm feeling this i have to go tell my partner hey you know what you left me and went and it sucks i feel bad about it now you make me feel better it's not it's not yeah. that right right you want to outsource your problems you can't sorry <laughs> <laughs> that's funny and there's another another interesting point that you made there that i sort of hung on to which was you need to get to the source of what makes you feel threatened now the word threatened sort of got me by shock which was now insecurity has been the word insecurity has been mellowed down so much when we speak about it that we don't see it as a threat we don't perceive it as a threat we just see it as something that we don't feel good about if i have an insecurity it's something that doesn't make me feel good it temporarily makes me feel you know it gives me bad feelings it gives me this, there are knots in my stomach and that's how we perceive it but what it actually is is a threat because the very term insecurity means you're threatened um which was super interesting and i think more people need to see it that way rather yeah. than just a bad feeling uh yeah. 